2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For the words are like a lamp shining. I'm going to preach up in here. Like a lamp. Y'all wonder why I was late to that? I was late because we have a little church up in here. Listen. Are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns. And Christ, the morning star, shines in your heart. Spiritually. Spiritually. We should look like Spiritually, we should look like this. There should be a glow about us. There should be a light about us. Listen, there should be, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you have Christ in your heart, if you have a thriving relationship, I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not, ha I'm not talking about having all your crap together. Sorry about that. It, having all your stuff together. I'm not talking about having it, it, you have never messed up or done wrong. And having that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're really seeking him and you really want him and you got to really have him and you know you mess up and, and you ask for forgiveness and you're trying to be more like him and, and it's less of you and more of him. I'm, talk, I'm talking about really trying to go. When you do that, there should be a difference in how you walk. I'm going to bring it today. There should be a difference in your steps of where you go. There should be a difference in your personality. There should be a difference in your service to other. There should be a difference in handling of problems. There should be a difference. Can I bring a little bit more word in here? Two disciples. Two disciples are walking the road. They're walking the road. There was Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, right? Jesus it had said he was going to do what he was going to do. He did. Now two disciples, what do we do? Where do we go? They're walking the road of Emmaus. As they're walking the road of Emmaus, somebody rolls up on them. Hey, what's up, buddy? No, you didn't hear? Hear what? Hear about this man named Jesus. This man named Jesus, he came and he did all these wonders and he did all these miracles. Really? Yeah, he did some amazing things and then they and then they crucified him. They, well, they really did? Yeah, they cru they crucified this guy. They crucified him. And then he said on the third day that he would rise again. And, 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 and now they're talking about that he did. No way. This guy did. And as time went by, they realized, this is Jesus. What would make it? it? Years had not gone by. It had been three days. These are disciples. It's not like he left for four months and got on a keto diet and came back and they didn't recognize him. It had only been a few, uh, it just been moments. And there were disciples. They said the disciples. It wasn't just like some random folks that never seen him before. These are folks that ran with him, hung with him, knew what he looked like. And you're telling me that you just talked to him and you ain't recognize him? Why could they not recognize him? When you have that resurrection power down inside of you and you have been crucified with Christ, there should be a difference about you. There should be folks that say, man, there's something different about you. I don't know what it is. I, did you get your hair done? Did you get a new outfit at TJ Maxx? Did you get new shoes? Did you go to the thing? I No. no. So, hey, listen, I had not had my hair done in about five months. I can tell you I haven't brushed my teeth in about three days. My life is a mess, but I can tell you about the one who redeemed me, the one who turned me around. The difference is the light that is shining down inside of me. The difference is the light, the morning star that is shining in in my heart, there should be a difference about you. When you have the resurrection power down inside of you, and you have been crucified with Christ, because Christ had been crucified and they didn't recognize him, and there was that resurrection power, there should be a difference about you. During this holiday season, we... As believers, as what I'm just talking about, that you have a relationship with Christ, we offer hope where there is none. Where the world is going crazy. Oh, the world is going crazy. Everybody, oh, 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 it is going crazy. We offer hope where there is none. We offer encouragement when it's needed the most. We offer kindness even though we're surrounded by hate. We offer compassion, 
in a world that cares about nothing but just the bottom line. We offer patience when we're met with impatience. We offer to pick one another up, dust them off, give them a hand so that they can regain their glow. This holiday season, we don't offer Rudolph, Frosty, Santa, and all the other stuff. We offer Jesus. In this holiday season, your words, your thoughts, your prayers, and your actions should be salted with Jesus. I'll say that again. We offer Jesus. In a world that is crazy, in a world that is hurt, in a world that is looking for answers, in a world that's trying to make sense what is going on in the world, we as believers have the answer. We know what is going on in the world. All the time I'm reading and talking to people and people, I can't believe what is going on in this world. I can tell you what's going on in this world. It's in the book. It's in the gospel of Matthew. Jesus said in the last day, perilous times are going to come and people are going to be haters of themselves and lovers of themselves and children are going to be disrespectful and children are not going to like this. But don't be worried. Lift up your head for your redemption. Draw it not for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming back. The Alpha and Omega is coming back. We are in a time where we offer hope where there is no hope. But here's how the enemy works. This Herod spirit. where the bells are blowing. This holiday season, and I'm talking all the way to New Year's and past, this holiday season, we were not called to blend in. And so often what happens is that we get in an area where there's darkness, and we so want to be, we have this social media, I don't know what Stephanie calls it, we have this social media mindset where we want to be liked, we want to have comments, we want to have people recognize us, and so we'll do everything that we can. And we go in the darkness, and rather than be in the light, we're like, ooh, 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 well, hold on, sorry. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. Sorry, I left my light on from Sunday. Sorry, I left my light on from Sunday. Ooh, I got and we think it's just a Sunday thing. And it's not just a Sunday thing. It's a Monday morning thing. And then it's a Monday at 9 o'clock thing. And it's a Monday at noon thing. And it's a Tuesday at 11. And it's every moment and every minute. It's not just coming in on Sunday and getting my little light. And I came to church and said, this little light of mine. And I sang my little song. And then we go. And we go out in the world. And then we turn it off. And that's what the enemy does. Because we want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want to have people around us. And that. And God says, no. I did not call you to be a part of the world. Some of us may never come back to church today or next week. Because you're thinking, I didn't sign up for this. I, I signed up for the easy Christianity. I didn't sign up for this. In the, in, 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 the, in the gospel of Matthew, Jesus says this, on this rock, I will build my church. Somebody shout church. Goes back to what mama taught me. Here's this steeple, here's the thing. I'm sorry, I jacked it up, Mama. You did way better. You did way better. And then you open up, and there's all the people, right? We, we are the church, right? The, that Greek word there for church is ecclesia, which means called out ones. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. The called out ones, the ones that have been set apart, the ones that decided enough is enough, the ones that are the, the one. Oh, I wish I had just what one, one, I meant. You, you are called, you are called to be. Listen, this holiday season, you're going to go in to a Christmas party. You're going to go into some, you're going to go, listen. It's, it's out there, and I just it's on Facebook. It might as well. Some of you are going to be going into family parties, and it's going to be like going into the devil's den. 
Some of you are going to be around some folks. You're going to get around here. Darkness is going to push. You say, how do I know? Because I live in this world. And the darkness is going to push in and push in and push in and push in. And Jesus said, I'm looking for somebody who's going to stand up and let their light shine in the midst of the darkness. Can I bring a little bit more word into this? Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn and know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I guess I got to keep going. 2 Corinthians chapter, I think it's 16, 6. And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God said. I will live in them and they will walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, somebody shout therefore. therefore. Nudge your neighbor in the, with an elbow and say therefore. And just kind of give you it know, like therefore. Therefore come out from among the unbelievers and separate yourself from them. Listen, listen. I'm not saying that you can't be around folks that are, we are to be that light. But he says, when you come out, listen, be separate from them. Don't join into the light. Don't be a part of the light. But let your light shine. And here's, here's the thing. Here's, here's the tough. Here's, here's the tough. Here's the tough part. Here's the tough part. Not everybody's going to like the light. It's not. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Not everybody's going to like the light. Just, just, I mean, it's just, it's, it's what you signed up for. Not, I said not everybody. Not everyone's going to like the light. Ask the disciples. Ask Paul and Silas. They let their light shine. They got thrown into prison. Had to praise their way out. Ask Daniel. He got thrown in the lion's den. And guess what? It was his BFF that threw him in the lion's den. He's like, hey, are you all right down there? Good friend he is. He's like, yeah, I'm fine. My God, come down and shut the mouth of the line. I don't need you anyhow. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, come on out. I don't need you. I don't want to be. Oh, I wish I had some. I Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen, I want to tell you, please, please, please. If you have to stand alone, then stand alone. If you have, I said, if you have to stand alone, then stand alone. If you have to eat by yourself in a corner at a family gathering, then eat by yourself in the corner. If you have to have a conversation by yourself, have a conversation by yourself. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And some of you, it's going to roll around the new year. And they're going to say, hey, come to this party and come over here and do this. And you're trying to get your stuff together. And you're trying to get your junk together. And they're saying, oh, no, come be a part of the part, part over here. And said, no, if I got to, if I got to, if I got to throw a party for myself, I'll throw a party for myself because I'm going to let this light shine. I'm going to let my light shine because when I stand before him, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. The word says, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we cast out devils in your name? He said, depart from me. I never knew you. What's that word new? I was never intimate with you. I never had a relationship. My light was never shining out of your heart you never let that light shine i wasn't looking for a perfect person i wasn't looking for somebody wonderful i'm wondering if i had somebody that let their light shine you messed around too much you wanted to be liked too much you wanted to be loved on social media too much he said i'm looking for some I'm looking for somebody that's willing to celebrate even if you got to celebrate by yourself. I'm looking for somebody that will rejoice even when everybody walks away from you. Do I got any crazy, radical, acrobatical, Jesus Christ fanatical, sabbatical takers, innovators in love with the creator? If that's you, jump to your feet and shout yes! 
And if you're really wild and crazy, if you're really wild and crazy, you ought to reach into your pocket, grab your phone, and try to find your light on there, and throw your light on your phone, and just shine it on up here while I preach the rest of this message today. And let me know you're letting your light shine. You can't put a damper on it. You can't hold me back, devil. God has been too good to me. He's been too faithful to me. If this is your first time here and you don't like radical preaching, I'm sorry, come back Christmas Eve. I need to tell of the light, the bright and morning star that turned me around. The light. I love it. Let that light shine. The enemy will do everything he can. You can turn them lights back on, please. Listen, do I got a few minutes? Listen, he, if he can't, and I know what you're thinking, oh, not me. Listen, Peter, Peter said, listen, I'll never deny you, Jesus. I'll never let my light go out. I'll never allow the enemy to convince me to turn my light out. Hey, aren't you one of his disciples? I, no, I don't even know that guy. The rooster crows. The enemy says, if I can't, if I can't get you, if I can't get you to turn your light out, if I can't. If the enemy can't convince you to turn your light out, then what he'll do. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, because we love it. We put up our Christmas tree yesterday. Mojo put the lights all up. Hit a throw. We, we love being with family. But it's when it becomes overwhelming. It's, 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 when, it's when this is the roughest time for so many people. At first service, they were very weird and Maggie, Maggie was there. And I said, Maggie, how long has it been since I did her husband's funeral? I said, how long has it been since her husband? And I could see her back her crying. I said, how long has it been? She said, three years. And she was bawling even before I asked her. Because she knows she's got to go another holiday season without him. And I say that because... We get, I gotta get, I gotta get the food, I gotta get the packages, I gotta get the cookies, I gotta get the Christmas tree, I gotta get this, I got, I, no, no, I, I gotta do this, I gotta put that, we gotta decorate, we gotta decorate, sorry mom, Pap, we gotta decorate, De Pap, come on, Pap, I gotta cook the food, the tree, Pap, the tree. that we're all surrounded by somebody that is broken. We get so focused on these things of, of Christmas.
present, we forget what Christmas truly is about. He's saying, listen, don't hide the light. Don't let the holiday season overwhelm you. But remember that you have that light. And you're going to run into somebody at work. You're going to run into somebody with your family. You're going to run into somebody you don't even really know. And you're going to. things and if they don't they don't we offer hope we offer encouragement to someone rather than looking on oh no i gotta get this oh i gotta get that oh no i gotta get that how about hey man we 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 haven't really seen our our neighbor Maybe somebody at your workplace said, hey, listen, I got a card for you. Well, I didn't get you anything. No, I just wanted to, I wanted to just let my light shine. Maybe, 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 maybe it's somebody that you hadn't seen at church in a long time. And it could be that they can't stand me. That's fine. There's a whole list of them. that doesn't take away the fact that they're still a part of the body of Christ. We offer hope. Amen? We offer hope where there is none. Don't forget to offer encouragement where it's needed the most. Don't get caught up in these things here. Don't forget that this holiday season, don't, don't, oh, I got the ham, I got the ham. No, no, no. We offer kindness despite being surrounded by hate. We offer compassion in a world that cares about nothing but just the bottom line in life. We, we are commissioned to pick one another up, dust them off, give them a hand so they, be, they can regain their glow. Offer Jesus. And that is just the simplicity of the gospel. No fancy lights, no fog machines, no nothing. Just offer Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. This is my last. Stand to your feet. This is my last. John, yeah. I've come to realize over 20 something years of preaching the gospel, becoming a senior pastor like at 24 years old. I was like, whoa, I was thinking. But I've realized around this the holiday season, <laughs> and it's just not even the holiday season. It's just every you know every day. But I'll say it this much: this holiday season, everyone around you is dealing with something. I'm talking about church folks today. I can almost guarantee. I can almost guarantee that the person you're sitting beside today is battling the collateral damage of your day. The Bible calls this, and this is one of the, the biggest attacks in the holiday season. I'm ending with this. This is, this is the biggest attack that I see during the holiday season, this thing.
big, the, the biggest attack, and some of you are probably might be battling it right now, but the biggest attack that I see, you know, some, some will be battling Herod, some will be just push and kick Herod right in the face and make our laser light shine and be peace or whatever. But I've even seen the strongest of the strongest. Even the ones that I think, man, they're so solid in their faith. They're so, they're so tenacious in their faith. But this thing I'm going to talk about here, boy, ooh, it can be brutal. And the Bible calls it a spirit of heaviness. Christmas and Happy New Year. And everybody's, oh, who's coming over? Oh, you got friends coming. Oh, what's going to happen? And summer. <laughs> Time to get people together and we shut that down. Amen. We're at Kroger's. Oh, who's all coming? You got so many plans for Christmas. Yeah, I got, I got some things going on. And you're battling. Maybe, maybe this heaviness is that you're grieving somebody. Maybe, maybe the heaviness is you're missing somebody. Maybe the heaviness is you're worried about somebody. Maybe the heaviness is a marriage that is crumbling. Maybe the heaviness is a mortgage payment that's late. Maybe the heaviness is from a, a, a test result that you're waiting to, to come back. And they said, we can't get the results until after Christmas. And, and you got this heaviness on it. Maybe the heaviness is you're dealing with a grouchy boss. Maybe the heaviness is an unforgiving friend. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe the heaviness... Uh, maybe the heaviness is just you're pushing back tears because the loss feels as real as it does today, as it does 10, 15 years ago. And here you are in line. Here you are sending out pictures, uh, the portrayal. You're at the post office of, you know, look at our family. Look, we took our picture together. But inside there's a, a heaviness, this light that, that you want to get back. You want to get back to that that light, but but the collateral damage of living in light. And many of us this season, right now, many within the sound of my voice, you're fighting to find peace and you're trying to push back the fear and just trying to get through the daily task without breaking down in the grocery store or the carpool line or at the post office. And you see many celebrate, but you have this I had John come up here on that song, and in a portion of that song, we sang at Weirton. And it says, all I want or all I need, you have it. It's who you are. And God says, no matter what you're battling this holiday season, the heaviness that's on you, he says, I got, I got an end to that. It's in Isaiah 61, verse 3. He says, Console those who mourn in Zion. Give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And this is not just going to come in here and this is going to fix it. But one of the things that my mama has taught me over my life, and I've never shared this, but 18 years ago, we lost my brother. And we lost him in the summertime. And so we all knew it was coming because we love Christmas, our house. We love Christmas. We enjoy it. And we knew that first Christmas was coming around. Did we cry? Yeah. Sure enough. But Mama always said, listen, we'll cry. But we're not going to allow this heaviness to put in there. We'll, 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 we'll cry on each other and we'll, you know, but we'll see him again. And we're not going to allow we, Man, we, we had a great Christmas. Why? Because we were just thankful. We were just thankful. And how you break for those that are battling a heaviness. 
is having the speaking life. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying, let it be continuous in your mouth. Lord, I just thank you today. It's been a rough year, God. It's been tough, but God, I just thank you. I just thank you, Lord. I, I just, I just thank you. Matt Johns was at the at the Weirton service, and Matt Johns, man, this this year has been so brutal for Matt Johns. Has just been brutal. He's been funerals and death and stuff, and lost his brother, and we talk about it all the time. And then he almost he almost chopped his head off the other day with his chainsaw. He had a chainsaw, and he was cutting wood, and it came back and split him. Split, yeah, split. Just caught him right here. Caught it just in time. And he comes to church. He's like, Pastor, I'm taking a video. <laughs> no, and his heart was broken. No. I said, dude, that's the key. I said, I, I wish I could preach you out of this. I can't. I wish I could have some great sermon and I could tell you, dude, I'm going to preach a sermon that's going to bring you out of this. He couldn't even tell you what sermon I probably preached last week. Not knocking you, Matt Johns. I'm just saying. But he's learned the key to that heaviness that he was battling. It's just being thankful thanked me each and every day that it's not just a one-time thing. And the other little twist that he threw on me, he said, Pastor, there has been a difference what I play in my car and what I play in the house. He said, I got continual praise going on. He said, I got praise. He said, I'm always hearing, you know, uh, the, the, you know, prop me up next to a jukebox at work or something, you know. He said, when I get home, I'm like, praise, praise, praise. And he says, here, I'll give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And we're going to do that today. Lift your hands towards heaven. And for those that are just battling, just battling that heavy, missing somebody, battling some things, it's rough. It's rough. And God says, I want to heal you today. And you might cry. That's fine. That's fine. That doesn't mean you're, 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 you're a weak Christian or you don't have faith. Anybody tells you that, they lie. God says, I'm going to just, I'm going to heal you. I want to remove that heaviness. That you're going to rejoice. You're going to rejoice. You're going to rejoice. You're going to rejoice. Come on, lift those hands towards heaven. Come on, let's sing it to him. Today. We're going to sing that portion that whatever you need today, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not a heaviness. and Maybe you're just battling some other things. Maybe you're battling some mess in your life. and Maybe you're battling some things of the enemy. And maybe you're overloaded this holiday season. But that portion of the song, do you have that portion of the song? Because all I want is all you are. Moses was at the burning bush, and he told Jesus, oh God, he said, who shall I say sent me? He says, tell him I am that I am. That's all. No, it's not. I am whatever you need. I'm your healer. I'm your provider. I'm Store, I'm your way maker. I'm your soon coming king. I'm your beginning. I'm your end. I'm your prince. I'm your peace. He said, I'm Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tiskanu. Whatever you need today, that's what we're going to sing today with your hands lifted towards heaven. And somebody might be dropping some stuff here today and said, you know what? I got to let this light shine. I, that, that stuff can go, but I. I go and restore. I need to go and apologize. I need to go tell somebody to forgive me. I need to go tell somebody. I need to go pray for somebody. I need to go show up at somebody's house. I need to go. All this other stuff will go, but I, I need to go. I need to go. Come on, let's worship him here. 